This is what you call a phone tag. Welcome back to the stage of history. What's good everybody? Lockout Man here and welcome to another edition of Lockout Man Makes the Call. I am right here in Gary, Indiana up here at the TA truck stop. I don't know. This truck stop right here is pretty cool because it has a it has a CB shop here. The dude that's in that CB shop right there, he's awesome. So if you guys need any if you guys have any CBs and it needs to be fixed, yo, bring it over here. My man right here will knock it out for you. But anyway, I got a lot of suggestions. A lot of companies that these that you guys want me to call. You guys want to know about Abilene. Y'all want to know about LTI. Y'all want to know about national carriers. It's a lot of companies out here that you guys want to know about. Not only that, I, I want to know about them myself as well. You know what I'm saying? So I went in, looked through the looked through the um, looked through the notes, the comments, and I came across this one right here. It'll it'll be somewhere on the screen, I guess, right there. I don't know, but it'll pop up there somewhere. So don't you just hate elevator music? Yeah. yeah. All right, all right. What's going on, guys? Welcome to a special edition of Lockout Me and Mace the Call, man. Yo. Earlier, I told you guys I was about to call Stevens Transport. Couldn't get a hold of him. Couldn't get a hold of him. But my man, introduce yourself. Edwin Rodriguez. Edwin Rodriguez. Rod, Rod, I'm not good with names. So you're Rodriguez. Gonna ask me. Rodriguez. Yeah. All right. My man Edwin. Yes. My man Edwin. You know, saw me set my stuff up, and I was getting ready to call Stevens. Fortunately, I couldn't get a hold of him, and um, he wanted to see what was up. He's a he's an owner operator, and he works for, or he drives for Bennett. Oops. Bennett, whoop, wait a minute. There we go. There we go. Bennett Motor Transportation. Uh, all right. So let's get into this special edition right quick. So Edwin, how long you been uh, working for Bennett? For about a year. About a year. Mm -hmm. About Bennett, man. Talk, talk to us. Let us know a little bit about Bennett and what what they're about. Uh, it's a family-owned company. It's my own minority owns. It's a woman that owns the company. It's out of McDonough, Georgia. Uh, it's uh, owner operators only. Uh, they have uh, six or seven different divisions. They have a uh, fan. They have uh, RGM. They have power only. They have RV trailers. They have. Government. They have uh, explosives. If you're, if you're into that, if they want to call for the government, they have explosives. They have all of that. They have plenty of different divisions there um, for, for all tastes. So you can pretty much find a home there for where you like. All right. Now Bennett is uh, is owner is owner op uh, a owner op company only. Yes. Right. They're they're not a company. No company drivers. No. no company trucks. So you got to have your own truck. Yes. Explain, uh, explain the process of bringing your own truck in with this company. Um, well, first of all, you start with the application process. They uh, verify your credentials.
to make sure that, you know, they want you, their safety requirements are very strict. So they make sure if you don't, you know, you, your license and your driver history and all that's good. If you make it that far, um, you know, the, uh, if you make it that, that far, then at that point in time, then they'll bring you into orientation. They inspect your truck. They do three, uh, four quarterly inspections. So every three months you got your truck inspected. Uh, they inspect your truck before you start orientation and you probably won't get to orientation if your truck doesn't pass the inspection. Um, but they're very willing to work with you. So even if you do have some stuff that's not over a major, um, they can they can get your truck repaired right there in the yard and uh, get you rolling and get you started. What's the divisions that they have? Uh, as I explained, they have the uh, uh, the newest division would be the government explosives munitions. They set the other division that they have uh, again is regular government, which is probably like uh, Humvees and track vehicles and things like that on the flatbed. Um, they have a van division, um, which is general freight or wherever. They have a new division also called Southeast United States. If you like staying in the Southeast United States and don't want to be jumping all over the country, that's a really that's a fairly new division and it's a really good division. Um, it's all flatbed, but it's just in the, in the Southeast United States. Um, they have RGN, which is removable gooseneck, which the trailer removes from the gooseneck so you can flip and roll things onto the trailer. Um, power only, which is what I'm presently doing right now. I started off with the with Bennett in the van division, and then now I'm, I'm doing the power only. Uh, in the power only division, um, you just provide a truck, and you never know what you're going to be hauling. You could be hauling uh, stage equipment, you could be hauling uh, brand new trailers, empty trailers, flatbeds, whatever it is. Um, then they have the RVs, which is uh, uh, we have the driveway, so if you want to drive motor coaches, brand new motor coaches from the road call, you hop in a motor coach, go deliver it to the dealership, and then you know, get home. Um, or uh, they also have the RVs where you're hauling RVs on the back of a trailer. Um, you have a trailer, and then it, it hauls three RVs, camper trailers, behind it at one time. Okay. Do, um, do you have to tarp them? The RVs? Yes. No. Oh, okay. You just got to secure the tires and secure the... the the receiver and you're good to go. How long you been driving? Uh, I started driving in 1993. 93 and you've been with Bennett for about a year. About a year? Yes. All right so let's talk about Bennett man. Uh, we can skip all of that. What higher areas do they do they hire out of? Do they hire all the 48 states? Or? Yes they do. They hire all 48 states. Um, you can haul, you pretty much go wherever you want to go. All right. What's the uh, where's the terminals located at? Uh, as far as there's only one real main terminal, and that's out of uh, uh, McDonough, Georgia. They have some other terminals in Texas. Um, that's for some specialized rigging equipment, things like that. Uh, but they also have terminals in Texas, and they also have here in Indiana. Oh, okay. Do they offer a sign-on bonus? Um, Depending on what division you go in, go into, and what the what you know what the demand is for that, they may or may not. As far as when I got hired on, uh, what they did for all of us that came into orientation in, in whatever uh, in in, uh, in Atlanta, McDonough, what they did was they uh, gave us a thousand dollars up front, uh, and that was for either uh, if we needed any repairs to the truck to pay for repairs. Uh, or if we need to want to stay at a stay at a hotel, else you're paying for a hotel, um, or whatever else. If there was no expenses that we incurred, then we just made a thousand dollars. So these are these are the these are your own trucks. So you don't have to you you're not bound by the company policy as far as let's say protection. So if you want to keep some type of protection on your truck, uh, are you bound to their... You're bound to the laws. And you know you can't carry protection on your truck, so you know that we're not allowed to, to do that. So no, um, you're, they're, they're very big on, on safety and they're very big, big on following and you know, heeding to the law. So if it's not legal, they're, they're going to make sure. And wonder, why I asked, and wonder why I asked that is because of the fact that there's been a lot of truck driver safety issues that's been going on lately. Um, we're starting an initiative, uh, a bunch of us truck drivers, to try to get the word out 
roads so that uh, that truck drivers could better protect themselves, come up with some ideas with like some of these truck stops would, would have like better lighting. Uh, just just most, overall. Most, most truck stops, I would say, light, uh, just uh, lighting and having a roving security going through the going through would, would prevent I would say about 80 90 percent of the problems in the truck stops right. the problem is you park in a truck stop and there you'll never see an employee or security or anything like that ever roll through that part truck stop so and you know uh, uh, a criminal is gonna they know they, they stake out if it's a truck stop that's kind of like all of these here we're in Gary Indiana and all these truck stops here have police officers it's not even security guards it's police officers that are in here Gary PD's in here so I haven't seen I've been here and haven't seen anything all right so all right so what type of uh what type of pre-employment drug test do they do uh urine urine yeah. so they don't they don't do the hair follicles uh not to my lunch no all right what uh what's their policies on felons uh because it is a government carrier and because of our yards are all they have to be government follow government guidelines especially since we're carrying a lot of government secured secure loads in there uh for the most part felons no felons yeah all right now they do look at it on a case by the case basis and you know how long ago it happened was it expunged or whatever but for the most part no, no. <laughs> <laughs> um you mentioned uh, you mentioned government, and we was talking previously about uh, about uh, the ammunition. So you have to have hazmat for that, and if so, have, what's the what's what's the policy if, of getting into that? Okay, if, if if you're gonna haul any type of explosives, you do have to have hazmat. Um, you have and all all explosives trucks or munitions trucks have to be teamed. You cannot drive as a single. Uh, there has to be somebody in the driver's seat awake and aware and able to operate the vehicle 24-7. Uh, so there's somebody's in that seat at all times. Um, and even when during fueling, somebody's in the seat. Um, so uh, you're going to drive as a team. Uh, you're going to get, you know, it's, there's a lot of extra rules and regulations. You also have to have a twit card and you also have to have a uh, a security clearance okay and if you don't have a security clearance um, uh, if you qualify if you actually have a, an established team and you have equipment or whatever you can get out get on with Bennett and start uh, in our other government division that's the division that's not the explosives they'll start your um, uh, clearance procedure process which is about three to six months and once you clear that and you got your security clearance and so is your team driver have your security clearance okay. then you can transfer over to the munitions all right now this is uh being that you are owner op uh this is uh owner op company uh they offer a percentage so what's the percentage breakdown uh i currently right now i do power only and as power only um i provide the truck i don't know what trailer i'll be hauling for my day to day um, but as a power only, um, I make 80%. Uh, the percentages there at Bennett vary anywhere between, I believe it's 75% on the low side, all the way up to 80%. And Van, I believe, is like 76%. Um, so it's it all depends on what division and what you're hauling as to how much your percentage is going to be. Do they have a temperature control division? No. Oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> so with the so with the percentage, of course, the more money that the company charged them, the more money you guys. Yes, make. it does. That's correct. All right. So as the rates go up, your your income goes up. All right. Per diem, you you know anything about that? Uh, it all depends on the on the individual circumstance. Um, you know, again, if you have a breakdown or if the trailer breaks down or. Uh, you know, whatever it is, equipment. Oh. That's okay. Uh, oh, um, so oh, okay. we were talking about what was our last question? Oh, per, uh, per diem. Per diem. Yeah, it all depends. Um, but one, oh, wait, as with any company, but especially here, the earlier you get, the earlier you get your dispatcher, your broker involved, the better things work out. There is a per diem. Um, it's not a per diem. It's a detention pay, depending on how many hours or whatever it is, to a max. 
of like three hundred fifty dollars per day, and then you know, for, and then if you're there multiple days, they just keep multiplying that out. What about layovers? Do do lay do layovers happen there? They happen with occasion. Like I'm on one right now. Oh, okay. All right. All right. So. Being that this is a this is percentage and not based on miles, how many miles you average a day to have a good percentage? I guess I, that's I, try, I guess I, try. I guess that's the right question. I try to do at least six hundred miles a day. I try I personally try to keep my loads to about twelve hundred miles or less so that I'm always turning in a load here. At least every other day I turn in a load. Um, the, 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 great thing about Bennett is that we get paid daily but we get paid right after every load so at the beginning of my load I'm going to get in advance on my I'm going to get in advance on my on my load on my settlement 50% of it and then uh, as soon as I'm done with the load let's say I pick today is Monday and I pick up a load and tomorrow morning I deliver the load and I scan the paperwork and I get it into the office in a reasonable amount of time oh, within two hours usually about from the time i get that paperwork into the office it's already on my the rest of the payments on my card all right do they uh reimburse for scales and tolls uh individual custody it's all it's all individual per customer so depending on whatever contract they have designated with the customer is whether or not that that is going to get reimbursed or not okay now you'll know that all up front though now the company, the company that you're driving for, uh, Bennett, uh, Flatbed. I, I drive for Bennett Truck Transport, which is the power only division. Power only division. Mm -hmm. All right. So I did ask you: Is there any tarping? Period. On, the, on, just the, on no... the flatbed side, yes. Okay. On the flatbed side, they could be tarping. There could be tarping. Um, and again, you when you select your loads or when they call you up and offer your load, if you want to tarp, great. If you're a tarper and you like that great you want to pull your shoulder like i did great but i don't say <laughs> but if you want to if you want to keep your health then you don't tarp <laughs> yeah. but right. uh, and and you asked me this earlier and i'm, I'm going to repeat it now being a flat better being a flat better is a young man's job okay so uh you know you started early you started in your 20s or even in your early 30s and you worked your way into it but if you started in my, <clears throat> my age group uh <laughs> <laughs> it, yeah. it will find it will find your weaknesses <laughs> I, I believe you i hear you man what's uh now being that you are uh, an owner operator you can make your own home time so what's yes. what's how, how long you normally stay out me personally six to eight weeks six to eight weeks yeah that's not bad that is not bad at all now the rest of the questions that i have are basically more towards the company side but being that this is a that this is a, a owner op type of company how long have you been how long have you owned your truck and what what type of equipment you drive uh, I um, I've been driving since 1993 I got out for a few years I was a single parent so I got out for about seven years and I came back in 2014 and I'm on my third truck uh, my first truck was a Lone Star um, no, actually, my first truck was a Cascadia, uh, a 2015 Cascadia, and then I went to a 2016 Lone Star. That's the international, right? International Lone Star, black one, and then now... That's with the long nose? Yeah, for the one with the curvy nose up front, yeah. And then I'm now I drive a uh, W900, Kenworth W900 with the studio sleeper. Okay, okay. How often do you stay, how often do you do you stay out? I know you say you, you six don't. Six to eight weeks. Six to eight weeks. And, and then you home for another six to eight weeks to break it. To no, break it I down. go home, usually when I'm home, I'm home between uh, three to five days. Okay. I, go I don't have any small kids at home anymore, so I have no real reason to stay that long at home. Leasing uh, with, this, uh, with this particular company. Um, can you go into detail about that? Well, I leased on to this company, you bring your own equipment. But earlier we were talking about like some of these companies offer a lease purchase program. And you were talking about student drivers and new drivers and all that. And one of the you were asking me my advice about that earlier. And um, my recommendation, I used to be a trainer. Uh, and one of my recommendations to all my students was that learn your craft, learn your trade. So um, most of these companies will push you into a truck as early as you know, three months, 
six, four months, five months, six months, they're pushing into your truck. And you're still, you just got out of school, you're just learning, blah, 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 this and the other. You don't know enough about your craft, you don't know enough about your trade for you to be also becoming an owner operator. That's a totally set, different set, the skill set. So you want to learn your craft, you want to learn about, at least drive all four seasons at one time. So that's a year. Uh, if you want to drive in all type of weather, you want to make your mistakes in, on their dime, not on your own. Right. Okay, so breakdowns, this and the other. You want to learn about all those things. Uh, you want to learn, you know, truck maintenance sure. and all the things that are, I mean, all yeah. the things that are necessary. For this side. Oh, no. So sure. you want to make sure that you know what you're getting into. Not all these purchases are created the same. The best thing you could do is, um, the other thing that you need to know about lease purchases is that you've got that truck and you want a company. So if you sign the lease on with, say, J.B. Hunt or Schneider or whoever, that's who you write for. When you get tired of their stuff, when you get tired of their crap, um, go ahead and uh, tell you return the truck and then you, go, you start all that, you lose all that money. So the best thing to do is save several thousand dollars and go buy your own truck. There you go. There you go. All right. So, Bennett, do they have an open door policy? All the way to the top. All right. All the way to the top. All right, Edwin, what is the number one reason to, to drive for Bennett? Uh, family environment. I'm not a number. I'm a name. Um, you know, I, I can go in there and I can uh, express myself, express my concerns or what, you know, whatever problems I may have or, or needs I may have. And, and somebody's gonna take me serious, and they're gonna, you know, address it and then do the best they can do to help me. And and they truly are interested in my success. And they're not successful without me, and I'm not successful without them. But they they, they know that the reason why they're in business is because of us calling operators. All right. Well, Edwin, man, thanks a lot. I do appreciate the time that you took to let us know about Bennett and let us know a little bit about yourself, man. I really do appreciate it. I know you got to go downstairs and get your truck, man. So get up on the road. I got your number. You got mine. Keep in contact, and uh, I'll talk to you again, man. Thank you. All right. Yo, y'all, that's, that's it. That's it. Bennett. If you guys want to know a little bit about... Oh, hold on. Hold on for a second. So... Guys, what you guys think of that? My man, Edwin Rodriguez. He's an owner-operator. Signed on with Bennett Motor Transportation. They do a... Uh, let's see what I can bring up for you right quick. They've been in business for over 40 years. It is owned by a female. They got several divisions. They got a drive-in division. They got the flatbed division for you. Flatbed, step deck, double drop, expandables, movable goosenecks, multiple multi-axles, steerables, and other specialized equipment. So if you guys are interested in Bennett, definitely give them a call. And uh, look, I, I didn't, I, I didn't even see this coming, y'all. Didn't even see it coming. So, if you guys are interested in Bennett, give them a call. All right, well, that's it. Thank you for joining me. Thanks to Edwin for uh, the information he gave on Bennett Motorsport, uh, Motorsports. Motor Transport, all right? If you guys want me to ask any questions to these recruiters or drivers for that matter, let me know in the comments below. If you guys have anybody you want me to call, let me know in the comments below. And then, until next time, who to call next? So you you've been out here for a while. Is there any any is there anything that you can probably any tips or anything that uh any tips or anything that you can uh give us out here as far as uh yeah I can tell you right now as far as uh, owner operator is concerned uh, get your feet wet and learn your trade first. Uh, people you know most of these guys go to school and the companies are pushing these lease purchase programs mm -hmm. and. You know, they've only got like three, four, five months, maybe six months of experience, and they're trying to get them into a lease truck. I would recommend, like I recommend, I was a, a trainer, 
and most of my students, I always told them, you need to learn your craft, learn everything there is about, make all your mistakes on the company's dime, and then go out. Then and when you first. flip over, you can because you would already know what to expect. Exactly. So you so you you agree with me that six months, three six months is not enough time for a person to jump into a lease because no, they no. wouldn't no, they I, wouldn't know the logistics of it, right? At least minimally a year. Hundred thousand miles. Okay. And okay. that's that's because you want to learn all four seasons being on the road. You also want to learn the ins and the outs and the different types of you know where to buy your fuel. Like I saw you were telling them about that that driver app or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, you want to learn all the different apps. Start talking to other drivers, and then you also want to know which company you want to go with, and you can't find that out in three months.